This is a first in a series of classes on diseases of the urinary tract for medical students. In this first class, we shall discuss uveitis and its presentation. Uvea is the middle coat of the eyeball and it is a major blood supply to the eye. In fact, most of it is made up of blood vessels only. We divide it anatomically as iris, ciliary body and the choroid. So inflammation is very common in the uveal tract basically because of its blood supply. There are a lot of avascular tissues in the eye. The cornea is avascular, the lens is avascular and this helps in keeping the media clear for the light to go in. But it needs also adequate blood supply and that part is taken care of by the uveal tract. Now the classification of uveitis. Anatomically, it is classified simply as anterior, intermediate, posterior and panuveitis. But this does not tell us about the causes for the uveitis. And for this, we have a clinical classification. The anatomical classification tells us predominant site of inflammation of the uvea. First, the anterior uveitis. In this, the primary site of inflammation is the anterior chamber. And the tissue involved is the iris and the anterior part of the ciliary body. The ciliary body has two parts. The anterior part is the pars plicata and the posterior part is the pars plana. The pars plicata has the ciliary processes and these ciliary processes are responsible for the formation of the aqueous which nourishes the lens as well as the cornea. Inflammation in the iris and the anterior part of the ciliary body gives rise to signs in the anterior chamber and this is called as anterior uveitis. Can be subclassified as iritis when iris is predominantly involved or anterior cyclitis and this is when the ciliary body is predominantly involved or iridocyclitis. Iridocyclitis is more common among these and in fact we will be discussing more on iridocyclitis in this as well as the coming classes. Next, the intermediate uveitis. Intermediate uveitis refers to the intermediate zone where we talk about the pars plana region. The pars plana and the peripheral retina, which is the anterior retina, is closely adherent to the vitreous, the anterior vitreous. So these three posterior part of ciliary body, which is pars plana, the anterior retina or the peripheral retina and the anterior vitreous. Inflammation occurring in these three zones gives rise to intermediate uveitis. This is also called as pars planitis and the subclassifications here posterior cyclitis when the pars plana is predominantly involved, hyalitis that is when vitreous involved and basal retinochoroiditis when the retina and the choroid in the anterior most part are involved. Posterior uveitis. Posterior uveitis, the primary site of inflammation is retina, entire retina and the entire choroid. Obviously, the spillover of the inflammation will come into the vitreous as well. They can be subclassified as when their choroid is predominantly involved, we call it as choroiditis. A choroiditis can be focal when only one single focus of inflammation is present in the choroid or multifocal more than one such focus of inflammation or diffuse when whole choroid is diffusely involved. Usually when the choroid is inflamed, the layer very close to it, retina, and to which it also supplies blood. So this also gets inflamed or edematous and can show signs of inflammation. So this will be called as chorioretinitis. It can work the other way around, that is, retina is predominantly involved in the inflammation and choroid being very close to it can get secondarily involved, then we call it as a retinochoroiditis. Some of the conditions in uveitis have neurological associations and then they are called as neurouveitis and all these are under 
posterior uveitis. This is how a normal posterior part of the retina would look like. We call it the posterior fundus. You can see the optic disc, the vessels, the macula, because of the clarity of the visual media, which is being clear, lens being clear, aqueous being clear. And the choroid is not seen as such because the retina is covering it, but the red color of the fundus is because of the choroid. The only alteration to it is because of the retinal pigment epithelium. The rest of the layers of the retina are transparent for the light to pass through and hit the photoreceptor. When there is inflammation, the picture gets altered and areas of inflammation will look yellowish, white and opaque. After the anterior, intermediate and posterior uveitis, there is another group of uveitis called pan-uveitis. Here, the inflammation is seen in all the parts of the choroid. So you have iridocyclitis, you have intermediate uveitis and vitritis, also the inflammation involving the retina and the choroid. So when all of them are involved, we call it as pan-uveitis. The so primary site of inflammation here, anterior chamber, vitreous, retina or choroid. So that was the anatomical classification of uveitis. This will not, as I said, give us an idea of what is the cause of uveitis. It just says where is the uveitis located. The clinical classification explains what is the cause of uveitis and this will help us definitely in our treatment. As in most cases of inflammation, infection is a major cause and infections by all microorganisms, bacteria, virus, fungus, parasites. And if we were to talk of bacteria, tuberculosis and syphilis would come to mind first. We talk of virus in uveitis, herpes group of viruses, extremely common cause of uveitis, fungus, candida or histoplasmosis, parasite, toxoplasmosis, toxicariasis. Next is the non-infectious causes. This is a whole lot of immune related causes. They may or may not have systemic associations. The common ones which come to mind here are sarcoidosis. So it can present in the eye alone or it could have systemic associations. There are certain groups of non-infectious conditions seen only in the eye. For example, sympathetic ophthalmitis. Then there are others like ankylosing spondylitis which has uveitis as one of its components. So these are non-infectious and they may be only present in the eye or they may have systemic associations. Knowing this will be a clue to our diagnosis. Another group, masquerade syndromes. These are not uveitis, but they present as uveitis. They are great mimickers of uveitis and one would be confused if it's not kept in mind that they were only uveitis. It could be as serious as a neoplastic condition. We are talking here of leukemia, lymphoma, retinoblastoma, or the non-neoplastic conditions mimicking uveitis like a retained intraocular foreign body or retinitis pigmentosa. So this would be the clinical classification of uveitis.